decision. They according, they, according to Eusebius, did not last long and more than likely gave way to more popular Gnostic groups under different names. Who they were is not as relevant as understanding what they taught and believed. So, uh, from my perspective, um, it can't be proven that uh, Nicholas was the founder of the sect. Um, obviously, it's been a, a point of contention over the centuries. Um, but some of the earlier church fathers tend to uh, state that uh, it was falsely attributed to him. So, I'm, I'm more inclined to believe that uh, he was not uh, involved in the, in the founding of that sect. Let's look now at their doctrines. Now, Christians are warned not to adhere to the doctrines of the Nicolaitans or allow those who do to remain within the congregation. In Revelation 2, 14 through 16, we read, But I have a few things against you. You have some there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to place a stumbling block in front of the sons of Israel, to eat meat sacrificed to idols, and to commit sexual immorality. In the same way, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Therefore repent, otherwise I will come to you quickly and fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Now from scripture we gather that the Nicolaitans were sexually immoral and condoned eating meat sacrificed to idols. But eating meat sacrificed to idols was merely a part of idolatrous worship. The church at Pergamon was chastised for its tolerance of the followers of Balaam and likewise the adherence of the Nicolaitan doctrine. The use of the phrase, in the same way, creates a relationship between the adherents of Balaam and the Nicolaitans. The two belief systems are similar. The story of Balaam and the doctrines associated will not be developed any deeper in this study, but suffice it to say they are closely related to the doctrines of the Nicolaitans. Insight into the doctrines of the Nicolaitans can be gained from the writings of those early church fathers that mention them. Irenaeus associates the doctrines of Serenthus with that of the Nicolaitans. John, the disciple of the Lord, preaches this faith and seeks by the proclamation of the gospel to remove that error which, by Serenthus, had been disseminated among men in a long time previously by those termed Nicolaitans. So it appears that Serenthus, at least in part, at, um, a long time previously, had been... Uh, 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 brought forth by the Nicolaitans. So he perpetuated uh, the Nicolaitan doctrine. Now, Serentis was a heretic contemporary to the Apostle John. He denied the divinity of Christ and the fact that God the Father created the physical creation. And Irenaeus calls them Gnostics. Um, and I quote Irenaeus here uh, from Against Heresies. It says, and according to certain of the Gnostics, this world was made by angels and not by the word of God. The Nicolaitans were apparently Gnostics uh, that had perpetuated this false doctrine long before Serenthus. There are those in the churches of God today that deny the divinity of Christ. Uh, radical Unitarians, for instance, uh, do not believe in the pre-existence of Jesus Christ. This is not a new doctrine. This doctrine was alive at the time of John. So it's nothing new. These people think they're coming up with all this new stuff, but this stuff's been around for centuries. They claim Christ had no existence prior to his human birth, and this is a Nicolaitan doctrine, and it's blasphemy, and it's heresy. These Gnostics also held that the physical creation was created by a lesser god, or a demiurge. Um, again, in uh, against heresies, Irenaeus says, and according to the, to certain of the Gnostics, this world was made by angels and not by the word of God. But according to the followers of Valentinus, the world was not made by him, but by a demiurge. For he, Soter, caused such similitudes to be made by him, or are made after the pattern of things above, as they allege. But the demiurge accomplished the work of creation. <clears throat> or they say that he, the Lord and creator of the plan of creation, uh, by whom they hold that this world was made, was produced from the mother, while the gospel affirms plainly that by the word, which was in the beginning with God, 
all things were made, which word, he says, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, through a misinterpretation of Scripture, Christians have been led to believe that Christ was the creator of all things. <clears throat> this, in my opinion, is a Gnostic heresy. Irenaeus holds this belief as well. He rightfully points out that these Gnostics assert creation by a lesser God, but then makes the mistake of attributing creation to Christ. Which, as we all know, Christ is a lesser God. He is an Elohim. But he is not Eloah. He is not God the Father. And he's not equal to God the Father. He's part of God the Father's creation. The subject of creation is an in-depth, in-depth study and will not, you know, we won't get into it a lot here. We won't expound on it a lot in this study. But for uh, more information on the subject of creation, uh, you can read Origin of the Physical Universe by James Daly. And for purposes of this study, suffice it to say that God the Father created the physical universe. Tertullian, in his five books against Marcion, says, For he tells of certain aeons, sons of turpitude, and of conjunctions of execrable and obscene embraces and permixtures, and certain yet baser outcomes of these. An aeon in the Gnostic belief system is one of the many emanations of God. We saw above that they believed the physical creation was the work of a lesser God. This would be this would be one of the so-called aeons. These aeons, according to to, uh, Tertullian, were sons of wickedness and vile behavior. He doesn't mention other beliefs and or behaviors because they are much too vile. Uh, this is definitely bad and uh, uh, you know bad enough where he didn't want to mention it so thus far we've seen the uh, the Nicolaitans were precursors to the Gnostic sects and held similar beliefs They were sexually immoral, idolatrous, denied the divinity of Christ, and attributed the physical creation to a lesser being as opposed to God the Father. What else we can ascertain of their beliefs from the start over here? What else can we ascertain of their beliefs from the information available? Tertullian makes a connection between Marcion and the Nicolaitans, uh, where he says the flesh is not, according to Marcion, immersed in the water of the sacrament unless it be in virginity, widowhood, or celibacy, or has purchased by divorce a title to true baptism, as if even generative impotence did not all receive their flesh from nuptial union, or, you know, all of these people received their being, their life, from nuptial union, man and a woman coming together in marriage and producing children. Now, such a scheme as this must no doubt involve the proscription of marriage. Let us see, then, whether it be a just one, not as if we aimed at destroying marriage, uh, or destroying the happiness of sanctity, as we as do certain Nicolaitans in their maintenance of lust and luxury, but as those who have come to the knowledge of sanctity and pursue it and prefer it without detriment, however, to marriage. Not as if we superseded a bad thing by a good, but only a good thing by a better. Uh, So, uh, you know, it appears that Tertullian (coughs) advocates celibacy from what he's saying here. He says that some Nicolaitans were destroying the happiness of sanctity in marriage by their sexual immorality. Marcion held that one could not be baptized unless they were a virgin, widowed, or divorced. It seems obvious that both sects hold marriage in the same disregard. While one cannot say with absolute certainty that the two groups held the same belief, there is an apparent connection between the two in this regard. Marriage is a sacred institution designed to bring a man and a woman together to the point they become one flesh. It is the only means by which the human species can be perpetuated within the confines of the law of God. This union is not to be destroyed by the followers of Christ. Some churches have policies that forbid marriage to those that serve in the clergy. This is yet another Gnostic heresy, in my opinion. 
Uh, Ignatius tells us that the Nicolaitans were given to making 